Yeah, it's 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 Albuquerque. The fight might be in Rio Rancho, but it's Albuquerque, Nuevo Mexico to me. And on this land, I'm undefeated. Since the age of 12 years old, I've been in the streets, to the wrestling mats, to winning state championships, to winning the king of the cage out there on that Santa Ana land. It's It's been a great track record for me. Yeah. You know, when you come fight me here in Albuquerque, you're not only fighting Diego Sanchez, you're fighting the desert. You're fighting the high altitude of 5,000 feet. You're, you're fighting the dry air that just gives you those chapped lips and that dry throat. You're, you're fighting the elements. As years have gone by and, and you haven't been able to fight here, I mean, is that something that you kind of long for and it's like, God, I wish you'd come back here like, do it again? You know, um, the last time that I fought here was 2014. And in 2014, I was in a different place than I am now. And I made a decision during the fight here at home in 2014. I chose to stay at my house. And I said, oh, well, you know, this is an advantage. I, I get my own comfortable bed. You know, I don't have to sleep in a hotel. Uh, you know, I'll do the do the weight cut in my own hot tub. Um, I'm going to I'm going to this is going to be good. But it was too comfortable and I, I lost that 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 mission element where you know you're you're a warrior and you're on the travel and you're going somewhere and and you get that you know that feeling of going into a different territory and you know I'm, i i still pulled out a victory it was um it was not the type of victory i wanted that night come saturday night my mind is right my health is right my training is extremely well prepared and I'm ready to give New Mexico, but not only New Mexico, ESPN and the rest of the world, the best performance they've ever seen me fight. Nick, you just expound upon about where you're at right now, the place you're in right now, and what people can expect from you to come fight back. It's where I am right now is just a very serene, calm, I feel, feel just very aware very, very, very aware of what's going on in my life. Very aware of the opportunity that has been placed in my destiny. And you know, it's, I didn't, I didn't, I go back three months ago. I didn't know if I was going to even be fighting in the UFC anymore. I was at the end of a 32 fight contract, the longest of all time history. The man with the most history in the UFC, the man that brought UFC to Albuquerque and opened the doors, who took Greg Jackson to his first UFC fight. The one who went against Greg Jackson's approval. He said, no, don't you do that game show. That game show, game shows are for, that's, that's a joke. I listened to the, to the rest in peace, Charles Mask of Tap Out. He, um, he told me, no, Diego, this is going to be the biggest thing ever. You got to You got to do this show. You're going to be a star and, and, and I'm going to get you in there. I'm going to talk to Dana White and I'm going to get you in there. I know you're only a welterweight, but, but, but I'm going to pull some strings. I'm going to get you on that show. And, uh, I listened to my gut feeling and I got on the show and I was the underdog then and I'm the underdog now. I was fighting middleweights then. I was the smallest guy on the show. I didn't look like anything. I looked like a wrestler. Not a division one national champion, but just a little old last state to become a state. The poorest state in the nation. Yeah, I was a little nothing. And they threw me in there. You know, what's the big middleweights. And, uh, I, I proved them wrong. I won the show. I was the first. Now, 15, 16 years later, I'm the last. You don't see any of those men still fighting. I'm still here. And I just signed five more fights with the UFC. Excited and thrilled to get that run started here in my hometown. Um, I 
could not be more happy. I could not be more ready. And uh, just there's a lot on the line. And uh, come Saturday night, just know that I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna put it all in the cage. I'm gonna go, and you're gonna see me fight. You're gonna see me fight. You're gonna see me not go to this guy, but through this guy. And I'm ready. There has been men in the past, so I won't act like I'm the first to defy the odds of age. Randy Couture was 44 when he won a UFC championship. There was Yoel Romero, who's 42 now, and he will be fighting Israel Adesanya for the middleweight championship in July. There are there are anomalies to the textbook of what you've been told, what science says is what. And I am one of those outside the box human beings. I have always looked for the natural fountain of youth. At the age of 20, I started searching for this. I was looking and searching. I said, well, if, if I can stay younger and stay healthy and heal my body and heal my mind from the inside out, I'm going to have an edge here and I'm, I'm going to have a better chance, a better shot at achieving my destiny and, and fulfilling what I feel was put in my heart that I am going to be this legendary great champion. So now at 38 years old, I will not lie to you. I will be honest. I feel better than I did at 22. There is a method to my madness. Some people say, oh, he's crazy. He's crazy. But you know what? I do the work. I take care of myself. I'm working on myself. I'm healing myself. I'm meditating. I'm putting the time in, in the nutrition, in the diet, in the even down to the water I drink and how I take care of this vessel that I've been given. So am I surprised? No. Am I proud of myself? Um, I just look at it as this is the way it should be for every human being out there. I want to inspire and and motivate other human beings to take care of themselves. Outside of fighting, if I could do it in the most extreme measures where I'm taking blows to the head and you see all these football players and you hear all this talk about CTE and yes, I've had five concussions in my life, only five, but I have recovered and I sit before you guys today speaking better than I did five years ago. It is very obvious the changes and the transformation that has been made and that is continuing to happen. Do you feel like you have a similar kind of thing here where you've actually attained a lot of fighters in the past with fundamentals in a similar way to Tristan Conner what he did? Well, Tristan is a good friend of mine. We've trained together during this training camp out at, in, in Las Vegas at the UFC PI. So I know him very well and we've spoke about, about Piera and we know what Piera brings to the table. The thing you need to understand is the Diego Sanchez you will see Saturday night is not the Diego Sanchez you've ever seen before. As I have continued to evolve in my outside the box methods, this last year has been the most impactful year of my career. As I have stepped outside of the box of Jackson Wink and the team and doing things just like everybody else. There are other ways to, do, to get things done not necessarily why do those other ways have to be wrong just because 
people say, oh, 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 no, no, your teammates, who are you training with? I'm Diego Sanchez. I am a legend of this sport. I can walk into any gym, anywhere in the world, with open arms and have teammates that will help me. What I'm doing now, the School of Self-Awareness and my trainer, Joshua Fabia, is the next level of evolution of the sport of mixed martial arts. Is coming full cycle to where I have a trainer and I may be the only fighter in the sport of mixed martial arts with a real trainer like Mike Tyson in Customato. Someone who really has your back. Someone who really cares. Gives you that time, that energy, that love. You know, things have shifted in the in the evolution. Things have sh shifted. Because in the beginning, it was, let's put wrestling together. Let's put boxing together. Let's put MMA together. Let's put kickboxing. Let's put Muay Thai. Let's put uh, Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. We're going to Russian Sambo, Taekwondo, all these different arts. Okay, and we're gonna put these things together. We're gonna put it in one box in a room. We're gonna put them in the box. We're gonna try to figure out our own style. And how can the most complete fighter be? All right. So when this happens, you now you have 40, 50 guys to deal with. You have 40, 50 guys you have to train. Tell me. How are you going to put the time and the energy into 40, 50 guys that you can't put into one man like a mic and a custom model? It's not going to be the same and it's going to change. It's going to be, okay, well, we got to get in. We got to spar. Oh, well, okay. We got to do wrestling class. And it becomes a classes thing where now you're not being trained. You're training yourself. You're training yourself with your teammates. Maybe you learned something from your teammate that day. Maybe he learned something from you. It's a give take, you know, but in the end, you're just trying, you're just trying. You're trial and error in it. You're not actually putting a method to it and putting a system and thinking it out. And so here I am changing the game. I'm a game changer. And sport will continue to evolve with or without me. And I just choose to be the one to be a leader, to step outside the box and say, no, no, I'm not going to be like all these other guys and cut 20 pounds. I'm not going to do it. They don't allow us to do IVs. They don't allow us to do IV IVs. So how am I going to recover from pulling all the water out of my body and my brain where I'm going to get hit in the head, all right? Cutting weight comes from wrestling. This is where it started. Are wrestlers getting knocked in the head? No, they're not. They're going in there for six minutes on a wrestling mat and giving it everything they can for six minutes. This is not fighting. This is not combat, all right? So... Now, I'm walking around at my fight week. And yes, I am the David in the Goliath division. My fighters that my opponents, the ones that are in the welterweight division, they walk at 195 to 200 pounds. Easy. Some of them walk around even at 210. Some of these guys are monsters. You will see the size difference with Michelle Piara and myself come Saturday. Because I, I tell you right now, I already know, the guy missed weight for his last fight. And he is a big man. He's a giant. But he's draining and killing himself. How do I know this? Oh, little old Diego done that before. Little Diego was 25 once too. Little Diego, Fought 145, 155, 170, 185. 
I even fought light heavyweight. I've done it. I am a game changer. And when it came time to make the crucial decision whether I was going to continue to fight and do this sport as a living, I had to make a choice. And when I went deep inside myself and asked that question, am I going to fight 55s or am I going to just go up to 70s? I asked myself. And I told myself, you're going to go in there and combat. You're going to go to war. You need to be the healthiest. You need to be the strongest. You need to be rested. And you need to be focused. Don't forget that fourth element of focus. If your focus is all on weight cutting, is your focus on the fight? Is your focus on your strategy? Is your focus on feeling good, and feeling strong, and feeling confident? No, it's not. You're breaking your confidence day by day as fight week is going by. So I'm here and I'm looking to change the game. I'm going to always be con continually pushing for hydration tests. They do this um, in Asia. They do this in Asia. They, they do hydration tests at weigh-ins so that they know how much how much water you're pouring out. Are you under 170 already? Right I will not be under 170. I fight at 171. So I will come in at 171 and where I need to be. Right now, I'm, I woke up around 173. Well, you just have to think about it like this. Life is patterns, ups and downs and ups and downs and ups and downs. Right? So if you are taking your body down, okay, and then I, I'll camps over, all right? Back up to 195. Back, okay, I'll sign a fight. Back down to 170, back up to 195. This is an erratic pattern, all right? This is not normal and it is not natural. Do you see normal people going up and down, up and down, up and down? No, no most, most people, most healthy human beings carry their weight if they are healthy. Some of you are not, all right? So now that I am constantly consistently carrying my natural weight at 175. The highest I'll get up 177, 178. Have a lot of salt, you know, drink a lot of water, you know, eat a couple burgers after the fight. Yeah, maybe I might get up to 178, you know, but none of this, it might be this, but this is healthy still compared to this. And so, the patterns of my life have be become consistent as the patterns of my breathing have become, become consistent.